Will the 91 Lamborghini Diablo finally outshine the Countach as the top Italian bull on Bring a Trailer? Or is hell not yet frozen over? Let's find out. Big Nerds is your daily YouTube car game show where we predict the online auction results of the most interesting cars on Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, Haggerty Marketplace, and more. It's just like the Price is Right game show. Play along and see if you can beat the nerds. This, this car is awesome. This car is... Uh, would be Radwood Royalty uh, if it actually makes it there. Uh, Mental, would you please bring up on Bring a Trailer this 1991 Lamborghini Diablo? Look at this bad boy. Two days to go still. This thing's in Longview, Texas. Uh, Boy, Lamborghini, Lamborghini is in Texas. You don't hear about that very often. Uh, this one says it's got 35,000 miles, uh, 56,000 56, kilometers. These, of course, came with that big, huge, roaring 5.7 liter V12. This is a five-speed manual transmission. This is a limited slip diff. Uh, this has deep black paint uh, with black leather upholstery, 17-inch alloy wheels. I love those phone dial-looking things. Um, scissor doors, of course. I mean, it's got all that sick-ass Radwood 90s slash 80s. Look at that thing with the... I mean, this is just... This ha This is Sir Mix-a-Lot. Put them on the glass right there. Um, you have to get a fur coat and, uh, you know, man, uh, you're going to be winning rat battles just, uh, just by driving this thing. Holy cow. Have you ever driven one of these lane? What do you think of the Diablo? Never, never driven a Diablo. Uh, but I, yeah, Diablo isn't that weird in middle. I've driven Mercies and stuff, but uh, yeah, it, forever these, I felt like Diablos were definitely like a good value ish for, you know, for what they are. But I think they've kind of popped in the yeah. last few years um, with this whole, you know, Radwood era and all, all these cars kind of going crazy. Um, do you know if this is, I, I know they change the interior like every year or two. And the first year they made them they had a really awful interior. I don't know what year, I don't know what year they started or anything like that though. But. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, I don't know anything about the interior. Maybe you guys in the comments can tell me, uh, if this is, but yeah, 2000 or 1991. I mean, everything from 1991, it was pretty tough to find a good interior on anything. Some of these were all wheel drive too, right? I don't think this those one would be is. the VTs if the, it was an all wheel drive. Yeah. Yes. And I, I know like those viscous transmissions are impossible to repair. So once they go, they go. Uh, I think this is the one you'll want with a manual. I mean, obviously with a manual, um, I, I have never driven a manual one. I did get to drive one of, I don't even know what their paddle shifter thing from that era is called, but it was clunky as hell. Um, and it was just a fun experience just being in it and hearing it. Um, but uh, a, a three pedal one, I would love to get behind it. Do you remember the Jamiroquai uh, oh, video back yes. in the day oh, when they dude, were yeah. driving these and and that clicking yeah. that cl even though not a fan of that gearbox that click and that i mean when you're up on the rpms and you're just ripping through i don't know what song that was but it man, was uh was, it's uh, cosmic girl because jk is a lamborghini enthusiast and historian and that was actually his car and in one of the scenes you can see both of their hair moving because the director had hired a professional driver who wrecked it and shattered the front window. And that's when JK said, all right, Whoa. your guy sucks. I'm driving for the rest of the video. So that's JK driving in that video. Good for him. Um, looking through this ad, let's see here. So the cylinder heads were resurfaced in 2011 and service performed in September of 2020 involving uh, machining the cylinder heads, welding and repairing the crankshaft and rebuilding the oil pump and starter. In addition, the following components were replaced. Holy cow, can you imagine the bill? Uh, main uh, rod bearings, the piston rings. I mean, this is basically an engine rebuild. Uh, holy crap. I mean, that... Where do you even find and someone to work on this? On it? Uh, it's got some miles for one of these. This has got uh, thirty-five thousand miles. I mean, that's the problem with these oh, old Italian high. V12s. That's real. Yeah, that may as well be a hundred for for a car in this era. One of these V12s, holy! Yeah. But you know, that's good news that it had all that stuff done to it. Um, for sure. Mental. Have you ever driven one of these? I have not. This is the last great era 
of Lamborghini just being absolutely nutcase Lamborghini. After this is the Audi, the VAG takeover. So a lot of their cars, like they started doing things like starting when you would turn the key and the air <laughs> conditioner would work. And that's just what happens when you're owned by you know Volkswagen and Audi. But like right here is the picture that I want to talk to. This is factory construction. Now, it's great that the shifter is slightly gated towards the driver, but look at the two window switches. They're not even... Like, they're not on the same plane. If these were pictures yeah. in your house, you would rehang them. And Lamborghini's like, eh, close enough. It's fine. And the fact that this car is coming out of Texas, like around uh, Dallas area, if you took it to one of those forensic things that they used to do on Top Gear, guaranteed there's cocaine residue in this car. Absolutely would bet my paycheck yeah, on Yeah, that came from the people who were building it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> There's no way anyone wasn't on drugs when they were putting this thing together. Uh, Patootie loves it. Uh, dog lay five speed. I mean, how bad is that? Pull, pull ass, pulling something, you know, pulling that first gear towards you and taking off. There's something about a dog leg. I love that. Uh, big question is how much do we think this Diablo will bring? I know Countach's have gone absolutely freaking crazy. Um, and I think these have two uh, with a manual five speed uh, boy and that engine rebuild. I think the high miles are going to hurt it, but I'm going to hit this thing at um, boy, where am I going to be? I'm going to say $400,000 and pass it on to my partner today. Mental. What do you think? Oh, so that is a great, hmm, I'm going to have to say it. Yeah, I think even now with all the stuff that we love to say about the season and the economy and everything, I do. I think it's going to break 400 just because it does. Lamborghini does have that collector car enthusiast market. So I'm going to say 408. 400, uh, eight, $400,008 or 400 okay. Four hundred thousand, four hundred, four hundred and eight thousand dollars. Got it. All right, Lane, where are you at? Um, being that it's, I don't know. I think black isn't the greatest. Um, I feel like if you want to buy, if you buy this car, you want to be like super loud. Um, I'm gonna go three thirty. 330. Okay. Significantly lower. I think the nerd her is kind of agreeing with you guys. You know, I, I maybe I'm being, wait, you said 330. Yep. Sorry, I was writing. Uh, He's got to type it all in. Type it in. I totally forgot to write our uh, bids down for the uh, for the Plymouth. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I'm probably pretty aggressive here. I mean, I, I'm forgetting that it's off season. It's snowing everywhere, um, and this car. I don't know. We've seen some uh, Countach's lately kind of fail to get those big numbers too. I mean, they were getting somewhere six, seven hundred thousand. There was one the other uh, was it last week that was that it didn't even break 500. So, but uh, you know, these cars, I, this is a much better car than the Countach. Um, not that this thing could be considered a reliable car, but Countach's are like almost undrivable. It's like pretty much w one out of two times you drive it, it will break. And that's including pulling it out of the garage and putting it back. Um, they are just not cars that are reliable in any way. Um, but these, I feel like you might be able to take it to cars and coffee, maybe go do a Canyon ring, get it back um, without having to call AAA. Uh, have you had anybody bring one of these to uh, a Radwood event and not have it be able to leave on its own power? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we've had a few, actually we've had quite a few Diablos at Radwoods. Um, I think I'm sure not all of them, left on their own power but they probably didn't get there on their, on their own power either so uh you know they or may not have made it home, home right yeah exactly yeah maybe yeah. got out of the parking yeah, lot we've had, yeah we've had a, we've had quite a few diablos actually um not probably more countoshes though yeah really uh, yeah i think diablos were i don't know how the numbers kind of but they diablos all went to florida as long all of them as were Kuntoshes. in florida yeah yeah and they, they probably didn't sell as many, right? I mean, that was like early 90s. That's when Porsche was barely selling any cars. And I wonder how many they actually sold. You know, probably said in the ad, but uh, I've already moved on. Hey guys, I got to tell you about our friends, God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at God and save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. God and Porsche of Las Vegas.
Hey guys, you're probably looking at your watch and wondering if bid nerds will ever end. So you better talk to our friends at Our Smiths to make sure your Rolex, Tag Heuer, AP, or any fine timepiece is in tip top shape. Our Smiths, fine Swiss repair. This one's a, this one I think will get a little bit more respect uh, from our guests. Uh, this is a 1991 Lamborghini Diablo. How badass is this thing from Longview, Texas? Uh, this is a 35,000 mile car. Uh, of course, this has the 5.7 liter V12. This is a manual five speed car. This is not the flappy paddle. This is not that clunky early kind of, uh, you know, early styles, um, automatic, uh, you know, manuals. This is a real deal three pedal car car. Of course, it's got a limited slip. Look at this car. It is just gorgeous. Uh, it's black. Uh, are you having problems finding that one? Uh, yeah, he's looking for it. Uh, we're trying to get the pictures up here, but man, this one, it's black with the black interior, the red piping, the gated shift lever. Um, I mean, this just has all that Lamborghini. Mm, just makes me go, mm, I want this car. Ian, what do you think of the Lamborghini Diablo? Uh, super rad. Uh, I mean, it was in a Jamiroquai video, which is... Like, hey, we talked about that on our episode. Very good. Yeah. Cool, all right. You win. Thing ever. Um, and I mean, gated shifter. Yes. That's uh, that's all you need. Um, I don't know. Honestly, are these worth more or these are worth less than Countach's, right? Of a similar mi mileage? That is generally the case. Yes. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, Countach's have really shot up. Yeah. They just took off. They went, you know, meteoric. And then now it seems like they've kind of, kind of come down and plateaued. Um, and I it's really thought the, all these those people that bought them had to have the engines rebuilt. Like, <laughs> right. Um, do we have, uh, do we have O'Neill's audio? Is he back on? Oh, uh, Mr. O'Neill, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. There oh, there he is. Okay. Michael, what do you think okay. of the Diablo? I think it's rad. I think it's right? a rad car. Uh, I love it. Yeah. I think it's super cool. Uh, consummate, I mean, I hate to say vintagey Lambo, but it's kind of. Yeah. Um, I did accidentally click on the link, and I know how much it sold for, <laughs> but, which was surprising a little bit to me, to be honest. But uh, yeah, surprising and watch. Well, I'll wait. I'll wait for cool. you. Yeah, I'll wait for you. Take if you thought it was high or low after we kind of reveal what happened here. All right. So I went big. I, I thought this car would really bring a lot because of just how high the Countach's have been. I thought it would just. I thought. As high as Countach's have been, I thought that would just drag the uh, the Diablo up. And uh, the Hoovy's garage, uh, Tyler Hoovy, he he had a famous. He bought a couple of these. He bought a Diablo and a Countach from an owner and sold the Diablo uh, for the same amount that he bought both cars for. Um, so, and that was fairly recently. So he was able to basically get to keep the Countach for free. Um, so that's why I thought it would bring 400 grand. I thought it would sell at that. Uh, Lane thought it was, uh, would only bring about 330. Uh, Mental was with me. He was up there at 408 and the nerd herd was, uh, where was the nerd herd on this one here? So starting at, uh, around to say, I think our lowest was 330 all the way up to, uh, 398. Okay, so mental and I were kind of mental on this one because uh, the actual sale price, this car sold to 43 bids for just $305,000. I say just, that's a heck of a lot of money, but that is half the price of a Countach. And this car, you might actually get where you're going, uh, unlike a Countach. Those are pretty damned unreliable. Uh, what do you think of that result, Ian? I, I think that's Awesome. Like, uh, <laughs> and my hot take on these is that I think they're better looking than a Countach. Okay. Uh, which I know is probably not, uh, <laughs> maybe controversial, but I mean, a gated manual V12 for half the price of a Countach and probably what half the price of a Testarossa, um, at the same time, like that's, yeah, Testarossa is really taking off. What do you, so like O'Neill, what do you think of this result? You think that was high or low? Having no concept of the the market, it it seems relatively cool. I, one thing I, I want to say about this is that they it actually, even though it's from like the early '90s, it doesn't look quite as dated as I thought it would in the interior, which is usually the thing that you know even interiors that are six or seven years old look really bad. This one's relatively sparse and. It's definitely got some 80s vibe, early 90s vibe, but it's not 
terrible. You know what I mean? It's not one of those things you go, oh, God, I got to change all this stuff to make it look uh, passable at this point. That's a good point. You know, I, I wouldn't have no pro- It feels, it looking at that interior just looks like a place that you'd actually want to spend time in. And it, I mean, yeah, you're right. The Jameer Kai video just totally immortalized the interior of this car. And I think that video may be one of the reasons why I always wanted a supercar. Um, you know, because the Countach, if you've ever driven, if you've ever driven a Countach, they are unpleasant. They are not fun to drive. They drive like ish. Um, you can't see out of the goddamn things. You can't really see out of a Diablo very well either. Um, but I mean, they're just being in a Countach is not, it's only pleasant because you're like, Oh my God, it's a Countach. That's the only thing that's positive about it. And then it breaks and you're stuck somewhere and you got to call, you know, triple A or something like that. Um, O'Neill, have you ever driven either one of these? I haven't. Um, the only, the most of the experience I have with any of this kind of stuff are like watching the Radarosa YouTube channel where the guy like restores uh, Ferraris sometimes. Mm. And I couldn't believe it. And then uh, Mike from Stance Works, who's right down the road, mm. I couldn't believe how poorly assembled that <laughs> Ferrari oh, God, was. Yeah. That he, I mean, it was a, a terrible car. This one doesn't look quite as bad, but. In comparison to like modern build techniques, you look at this and go, I could literally build most of this stuff in my garage with the hand tools. Like it just doesn't look that complicated to me. Um, I don't know. I haven't driven one, but to be fair, I haven't driven a ton of stuff anyway. Uh, I'm, I'm fairly monogamous to the Porsche world. So uh, the answer to most of those, have you driven that will be no. (laughs) <laughs> good, good, uh, good tip. I feel like this is the kind of car that, you know, when you talk about a blasphemy build, like the, so the later generations of these, they had the all wheel drive with the viscous transmission, that viscous transmission, if that thing fails, it's gone. There's no one that can replace it. Mm. No one can repair it. The cost of doing so is more than the value of the car, even if it's a three or $400,000 car. So I feel like one of these is just screaming for the damn LS swap thing, uh, because the car looks so amazing. Uh, and there's such hunks of crap that I, you know, a guy like Michael, I, I, it would be awesome if you got a hold of one of those that was just like basically dead in someone's garage that cannot be repaired. Well, fine, gut it and start, let's Bring go. Let's put a Subaru engine in there. Let's make Bring this thing on. actually we'll, work, right? I am right we'll, we'll here, JP. I am right here. I can to- I have a welder and a plasma cutter. I will do it. Somebody oh, buy me we one. We will K-swap that shit. I, th- I think the swap you need to do is put a Fiero engine in it. <laughs> Ooh, That's Iron cool. Duke Diablo. There Love it. There you go. There you go. It's the, it's the inverse <laughs> Fiero. Is that a kit. real Lamborghini? Yes. <laughs> But it has a Fiero <laughs> engine instead of the other way around. That's hilarious. I love it. Parts of it are. Yeah, it's uh, un- yeah. I mean, how many of these? How many fake ones have you seen driving around? I mean, they're all there, over the there place. There are two on our local Facebook marketplace right now. Oh actually. my gosh, Real- Diablos, really? The the, the kit. Yeah, they, they're out in California, but they're out there. Okay, all right. Well, we might have to. They're get they're, one. they're not done, by the way. They're, oh, they're not, not driving. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get Rami to blow one up for us. Um, all right, I want I want Michael O'Neill and um, I want an O'Neill mental team up. Uh, I want to, I want to see this car built. I, I want this to happen. Let's, let's, let's get the nerd herd to find us a effed up Diablo and get these two yahoos together. I, I can't believe I got to send you two characters to Top Gun. Hey guys, thanks for watching this clip of the Bid Nerds podcast. Play along with us live every Sunday and Wednesday night at 6 30 PM on YouTube and see if your bids stack up to the rest of the nerd herd in the chat live. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you on the next episode. No!